What's up, Gun Nuts? It's Ferrari Steve from RealGunReviews.com, and today I'm going to do video number two in my series of upgrading a bone stock West German P226 to get as close as we can to Sig Sauer P226 Legion specs. This lines up with an article that I wrote on Real Gun Reviews. Feel free to go check it out, uh, where I compare all the differences between an original 226 and the latest 226, the 226 Legion, and I've decided why not take a bone stock one and go through all the upgrades or modifications, uh, which I consider upgrades, whether or not you do, totally up to you, and uh, see how it turns out. So the first video I did a comparison, I'll do a safety check here, uh, of the trigger pulls of the two, and I've been shooting this gun a lot just to kind of get a feel for it. So the first change you're going to want to do is to replace some springs. Um, these are two of the three springs that I'm actually going to upgrade. Uh, the other one's the main spring, but that comes in a later video when we start doing trigger action. Uh, these two springs um, are the two easiest ones to do, and they're going to come as part of the P226 parts kit, which I highly recommend if you buy a used 226, uh, go ahead and buy the 226 parts kit and just swap everything out. It's what SIG does when they sell a, a certified pre-owned SIG. They're going to throw these springs in anyway. You may as well do the same. So let's pull the uh, slide off. So we can get to the first one. This is the recoil spring. And these are super cheap, if you, even if you buy them separately, I think they're like nine bucks, but as part of the, the, the parts kit is even a better deal. Uh, this original one, you will see it doesn't have any color on it, and that's okay, but there's just no way to look at it and know. You can't take the spring and go, oh, that's had uh, 4,300 rounds. So you just can't do that, right? You don't know. I mean, it looks like it's straight, it still feels springy. When I shoot, uh, it still feels fine, but uh, you know, uh, SIG recommends replacing these every 5,000 rounds anyway, and there's just no way of knowing if you buy a used SIG um, how many rounds it's been. So if you've got a newer spring in, go ahead. If you've got a West German SIG that's all original, you're going to want to get one of these uh, new springs in it. No difference. It's still a 16-pound spring. They haven't changed anything about it. It just has a little bit of color on it, and that's because um, one end of this is a little tighter than the other. That end is looser and goes in really easy. This end is coiled a little more tightly, and that's the end that needs to go on. That, that's because you want it to sit there and grip the uh, the guide rod. Um, but that recoil spring to kind of tighten in there and hold on. That means it's a little bit harder to get off, but that's okay. A lot of guys will just take fingernail polish and put that on here, but we're going to replace it anyway, so let's uh, get this open here and we'll grab the new spring. I like to keep my original parts just for fun. So I'm going to put it in the old bag just so I know what it is. And then again, you want to get the color side on, slide it on, and there. That's done. Uh, in fact, let's put it back in. There we go. All right. That's done. Next is this trigger bar spring. Let's get it out of here. And I uh, didn't want to cut my mat, so I didn't press hard enough. There we go. Let's get this out of here and take a look at it. Now, uh, doing this is going to show you the difference between the original trigger bar spring, which SIG changed the design on, and I discussed this in more detail in the article, so I'm not going to go too in-depth. Uh, so you're going to need a screwdriver, flathead. Actually, I need to do one side. And you only need to do the right side. However, once you do this, you are going to have to take both grips off. And I will demonstrate why, because I've never seen a video that actually demonstrates why you would want to do that but so stay tuned here we go this is the original trigger bar spring this kind of curved version and in the article i go into some more uh, detail with the photos and show it next to the grips on the legion and and the stock one but really the problem is this little relief section here is designed right to let that spring fit into the grips um, the new style however is looped like this and the reason it's looped like this, and the reason it's looped like this is because right here, and I keep mine really well lubricated, if you pull this spring off, and, and the, the way to pull that spring off, by the way, is just uh, you know, push down here, you know, lift a little bit and push and release the tension, and then just kind of rotate and wiggle that and it will come out. Um, this one really doesn't have a lot of frame wear. I mean, I can see a little bit there. Uh, that spring was wearing into the frame, and so SIG, this is the first thing SIG redesigned on the 226 uh, because this loop keeps it up and out of the way. So stick this in that, this end in that little hole, and then find this little notch on the bottom part of the trigger bar. And you don't need any tools, just find that notch and drop it in right there like that. Now, 
that doesn't rub there, but you'll notice this kind of sticks out and that's going to be a problem when it comes to these grips. So I'm going to disclaim this. Do not do this. What I'm about to do is just for educational purposes. I'm going to put the original grips on a 226 that has the upgraded trigger bar looped spring, which you should not do. I'm going to say this again. Do not do what I'm doing right now. Um, it will not hurt the gun, so that's why I'm just doing it here for educational purposes. But you could hurt yourself because if you ever need to use this gun, it will malfunction. So again, for the third and final time, any lawyers watching this, do not do what I'm doing. This is for educational purposes on YouTube only to demonstrate what happens if you put a new style trigger bar spring in an original P226. The first time you go bang, cool, it's probably going to work. But when you go to reset, uh-oh, I didn't get a reset. Now, now it'll reset, but I've got to get there and I've got to pull it forward. And that's not good. You can maybe do that, but really, because that trigger bar spring is there. Notice when I loosened that, we got that reset. That's because these grips don't have the notch cut out in the side to allow for this to operate. So it was getting stuck and getting unhooked here. And in some cases, I see where it comes unhooked completely. So once you upgrade this trigger bar spring to this loop style, you cannot run these grips anymore. Um, if you want to run the original grips here, you either have to Dremel out some room here, which I wouldn't do. You're better off just upgrading the grips. And I recommend these uh, Hogue Extreme G10s, which is what we're going to put on this as part of this project. So I'm not even going to go ahead and put these on because I just want to underline. Uh, if you take off the original bent trigger bar spring and go with this loop spring, do not run these grips. And you've seen why. So there we go. We've replaced the springs, the uh, recoil spring and the trigger bar spring in the West German 226. And we are one step closer to Legion Specs. Uh, go ahead and subscribe. You can watch the rest of the series of the videos as we get closer to getting this to a legion. Uh, have fun and stay safe out there. And one way to stay safe out there, do not run these grips with the loop trigger bar spring. See you in the next video.